All right, y'all, welcome back to Combat Arms Channel. Okay, so today we're checking out some combat footage out of Ukraine. I know you guys have been wanting me to react to some combat footage from Ukraine. So today we're checking out some footage from Ukrainian Special Forces. Now this is specifically their Omega unit, which looking at the description is like an anti-terrorism unit inside the Ukrainian National Guard. Now, I'm pretty sure I've heard of this unit before, but it wasn't from the recent Russian invasion. So I think this unit was active back in 2014 in the original war, war in Donbass. Um, but this footage is coming out of their combat in Severodonetsk, which is in like eastern Ukraine. Um, so I imagine things are pretty hot and heavy, uh, even, you know, obviously today being that close to the Russian border. So yeah, it's about a minute and a half long. I think we're going to see some pretty intense stuff because Ukrainian special forces definitely don't mess about. So let's check it out. Okay, so armored truck, not quite like an APC it looks like. Looks similar to our Bearcat. <laughs> okay, nice. Well, okay, I imagine these guys are probably rocking some pretty high quality weapons. So, you know, chucking around like that, it's probably going to be fine. But yeah, it looks like they have like a, almost like an armored SWAT truck kind of vehicle there. AT4. Oh, nice. Damn, okay, a river crossing. Dude, that terrain is freaking gnarly. If you guys have ever done any sort of room clearing or, you know, like mounts or fighting in built up areas, this looks like a nightmare. Because not only do you have multi-story buildings, you have all this like piping and whatnot to obscure view and make it like really sketchy when things actually start popping off. But you also have like this micro terrain, you know, you can kind of take cover here. There's a lot of shadows, there's bushes and whatnot. So if you start taking fire, especially on this road here, you know, it's gonna take a while, potentially take a while to try and find out where it's coming from. And then yeah, dude, this terrain is gnarly. Especially the jacked up infrastructure, you know, with all the bombing and stuff. Yeah, very precarious. Sheesh. Looks like they're operating in a pretty small team though. Like really small team, like remarkably small to be honest. Oh, but it looks like they have some pretty solid equipment. It looks like now he's got an RPG and it looks like that was a PKM. I'm not sure if they, they might have just gotten that from maybe someone that they were fighting with. So, okay. Yeah, this this terrain is is insane. Um, but, yeah, it looks like what? There's maybe three, four dudes. And it looks like they're moving pretty quick. So, maybe they're moving to, to an assault or like an ambush position more than likely. Especially with the RPGs. <laughs> I like that. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, it's gonna get really smoky in there real quick. Damn. So it looks like they're firing and maneuvering, which is pretty smart. I mean, especially if you're firing an RPG, it's probably gonna be pretty easy to pinpoint where it's coming from. Um, so it looks like they're popping, you know, popping around in different windows whenever they're actually launching the RPGs off. And then, yeah, one dude's got the, the PKM as well. So they do have some pretty solid, like, high-quality ARs here. But it also looks like, you know, they're, I don't know where they've got, they might have just had these from the Ukrainian military. Or maybe these were actually picked up somewhere from Russian forces. But this thing, I don't know if it's spray-painted or if it's just seen better days. It looks pretty beaten to hell, but... Hey, it's putting in work still. Okay, grenade launcher it looks like. My gosh. Yeah. Again, the biggest thing that like just sketches me out the most when I see this sort of combat footage is just the terrain. And I know I've hit hit on it already, but Things are pretty simple. I mean, once you get pretty comfortable doing CQB, especially when you're rolling around with the same team and you kind of know how your buddies operate, everything is going to get pretty smooth when you're dealing with like general layouts of buildings. But when you have things like this where, you know, there could be a doorway, that's one thing you'd need to cover down on. But then when the entire wall is blown down, that's something else you need to factor in. There's danger areas all over the place. 
And when a hole is blown into the wall like this, you need to picture all the different angles you can be potentially taking fire from. And then of course, at the same time, you have all of this crap on the ground where you're, you know, you can't even move quickly or effectively. And then, yeah, I mean, of course, yeah, it's gonna be kind of sketchy to try and move around in this because you never know what's gonna cave in, but that is definitely not on the top of their mind at this point. But it looks like they are moving pretty quick, probably to get to an ambush, which is something that we've been seeing a lot with Ukrainian footage, is just trying to slow down their armored columns or their convoys by hitting them with these anti-tank weapons. And yeah, we've been seeing some pretty solid effects, which... I mean, you've been seeing RPGs, you've been seeing AT4s, Laws, uh, N-Laws, Javelins, the whole gambit of these sort of anti-tank, anti-armor weapon systems, and they have been very, very effective. So this is more of guerrilla style tactics, but at the same time, you can imagine they need to be pretty well versed in conventional tactics, such as, you know, room clearing or general military operations in urban terrain. You need to have a pretty good solid understanding of that and especially ambushes because that's what we're seeing a lot of before you can move into the gorilla stuff. Gorilla stuff, I mean, you can be relatively effective, but if you want to survive, you need to have a good lock on those fundamentals so you're not doing sloppy ambushes, so you're not having the, the appropriate support. So whenever you do start engaging, the guys aren't just running through you or you know surrounding you really, really quickly. So there are a lot of things to consider and yeah, just with the terrain and, you know, even like the sparse, like the crazy wide open fields, if you don't have that sort of mechanized infantry support, it can get very, very scary very quickly with their ability to maneuver on you. Okay. So I know that was pretty short. Um, again, if you guys have any recommendations, you can throw them down below. I do have a bunch of other videos that are, I was recommended specifically for like combat footage from Ukraine. And a lot of it's really fascinating. A lot of times I'll end up just watching it like right on the spot. And generally when I do reactions, I try and react to it when I'm seeing it for the first time, like we're seeing in this video. Um, but yeah, it is nice to just sort of stay up to date on everything, stay up to date on the tactics that each side is using just to kind of get a, a better idea of how the situation is and also kind of learn from it, especially from my mindset, still being in the military, sort of getting a, a picture of how everybody is doing things in this modern conflict. You know, this is pretty much like, it's a pure on pure conflict. And you don't see, you don't have many of those to draw experiences or knowledge from in recent history. So uh, yeah, and this is obviously the most recent because it's still happening. Uh, of course, definitely uh, big support to Ukraine. And it's, it's awesome to see them being so effective against this obviously much larger force, you know, this force with a lot more equipment. It's nice to see them go down to the tactics and the fundamentals and be effective at that. And it's nice to see, you know, support from other countries as far as sending volunteers, sending equipment and whatnot. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of footage out there. There's no shortage whatsoever. So there's plenty of things to react to. I generally don't react to combat footage. It is interesting to check out, but it does get to a point where, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I could say they're not doing this well enough, but at the end of the day, it's combat. Like things aren't going to be smooth like you would see in training. But yeah, hopefully you guys appreciated the reaction. Again, if you have any videos out there, if you see any, you know, combat footage out of Ukraine that might showcase maybe a little more of the terrain or the tactics, maybe some formations or again, just the general equipment where we can do a more comprehensive breakdown of what we're seeing. Definitely feel free to recommend that down below or you can head over to the Discord and drop it there. We do have a sort of Ukraine um, conflict channel in the Discord. If you guys wanna go and talk about the, the whole Ukraine conflict right now, then yeah, I would definitely recommend it because there's a lot of really interesting stuff, a lot of really interesting articles that are dropped there as well. But yeah, that's it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.